Happy New Year and welcome to today's Friday Tech Bites show. I, I join you guys right where we left off. I'm with Melissa. How are you doing, Melissa? I'm good. How are you, Rick? Happy New Year. Uh, Happy New Year as well. And we uh, we have a great topic here today. Uh, hopefully all of you are joining us, uh, but let us know where you're from. So I'm based in Ohio. Melissa's based in Jersey. We've got a producer in Romania and Europe. We've got a producer in Atlanta and Georgia and the U.S. We're going to light up the map. And so we're going to get it built here. But drop in the comments where you're where you're joining us from. Um, we're tricasting on three social networks here. So we're watching all three. And let us know where you're from. So we're going to talk about an interesting topic here today, Melissa. Immutability. What's that mean to you? Let's start out with a definition. This is like cheating. Um, okay. Uh, immutability in my world means two simple things that my data can't be changed and it can't be deleted. Okay, fair. I did build a definition. So let's, uh, let's see how let's, close I did. Let's see. Yeah, let's take a look at the slides here. So I do have that defined as data. Let's context it that way as data that is not capable or susceptible to change. And that is, that's important because the uh, the data that we have, especially backup data, that is so important for this this one thing that keeps happening in the industry, Melissa. What what could that be? Um, that's a really good question. Ransomware. ransomware oh, yes, ransomware. yes, that yeah. thing. That's that's right. Uh, that's something that we are as an industry are you know looking at trying to always give the market more options to be resilient against some of these threats. And the topic today is double play and triple play immutability. Now, I stole that from what sport, Melissa? What sport did I steal? I only from? know because you told me this beforehand. It's baseball. Oh, it's true. Believe it or not, we do prep for these friends. <laughs> uh, but basically, one of the things that I think is one of the most effective specimens out in the market is immutable copies of backup data. So having something that's not capable or subject to change is by far, in my opinion, the most effective specimen to drive recovery. And so when you look at what we're doing here at Veeam, we live in a world where we have so many double play and triple play immutability options. And, you know, I, I talked to plenty of organizations that have just one copy of immutable data, but I posed the question, Melissa, if it's really easy, why not have two or more? What do you think? I think that's a great idea. I think you want as many copies of your data as you can possibly have these days. And um, why not make them immutable because it is so simple, right? And I know we're going to go into detail with that, but I don't want to spoil it. But why not? There's really no reason not to. Yeah. And one thing I want to highlight for those that are out here attending this, you know, hundreds of thousands of people across the world are using Veeam. You can actually get to this without as much reconfiguration as you think. And that that is so important. A lot of times people, and they might look at these designs that we're going to show up here in a second. They might think, well, I have to redo everything. And is that a true statement? Do I have to redo everything? Melissa? Absolutely not. Um, right. You do need to put a little thought into it, right? You yeah. need to sit down and make sure that you do actually have an end-to-end -end data protection strategy that will keep you safe no matter what type of event you encounter. But you don't have to go redo everything, right? We're not reinventing the uh, wheel here. Yeah, that's a very good point because it can be as simple as managing copies of data, right? Because chances are we don't have enough copies anyways, right? When we talk to organizations who have deployed Veeam, you know, they might have done this and that, but they might not have done this other thing that will get them to that next level. So that's where I want to set up this idea of double play and triple play immutability. And the reality is it's easier than you think to get started. So let's start with the first one. What, I've, what I'm looking at here, I, sh I, th I think I should actually zoom into this with an explanation first, is when I say there's immutability at every step, there's a really central technique to that, and that's the scale out backup repository. Um, I have my own definition of that, Melissa. Oh, but, come on. <laughs> but uh, why don't Melissa's you give me a definition? Uh, but no, um, I think it's important. All right, why, so what would you define it as? You're not going to like this. I might okay. get in trouble here. It's like VMware for backup repositories almost, right? We're taking your physical backup repositories and putting them into a logical construct that's really easy to manage and access. And more importantly, we're going to, through the power of policy, right, we're going to move your data to whatever tier it should be in at the appropriate time based on what your requirements are. Oh, that's a good one. So, so you know, that analogy of VMware, we're, we're going for abstraction, 
right? right. You're abstracting. Uh, that's a very good analogy. I like to say it's a software defined, uh, cloud ready, secondary storage system. And it was actually built, uh, I think it was V7, it may have came out, where it's one of those things where it was built to allow customers to address the phenomena of the backup storage is full. I need to spill over right. to another one. And that right? happens, right? It yeah. happens. Right. Like, oh, or, it filled up. What do we do? Yeah, yeah or you're add, done add with another, that brand. Add another piece, right? We yeah. don't care. Add another piece. You're good to go. Something's off lease. It's got to go. You know, That's a really good use case, too. Yeah. So the thought here is that this software-defined secondary storage system can be used to extend to the cloud. But when you think about sprinkling immutability dust through it, these are the areas where you can enjoy some of the some of the Veeam controlled immutability in the mix here. So the performance tier is presumably that on-prem copy, the capacity and archive tiers would be those offsite copies. And that could be the public AWS S3 or uh, S3 compatible systems. Yeah, we're not picky. Like, no, we're, definitely we're not, absolutely. Not picky. Absolutely. So I did get an update from the producer that the map is ready and we've got a great crowd. Let's take a look here before I def define this a little bit more. So over in the U.S., we've got Michigan, we've got uh, Grand Rapids. I used to live up there, so thank you for that. Over in Europe, we have Austria, we have Portugal, we have France. Welcome, everyone. I would not do anything else on a Friday night. Down in South America, we've got Brazil, we've got Ecuador. Welcome. And then South, but other side, the transatlantic combination we have over in Africa, we have Nigeria, and then far over there, we have India. So let us know where you're from. We're going to light the map. Oh, we got another addition. Czech Republic is watching, oh, too. Oh, Czech Republic. Oh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Wow, that's a lot of green. Yeah, Michael drops, in a, quick, Michael drops in a quick question about immutability, on, and then that's related to the other question about these two different purpose-built backup appliances. Short answer is stay tuned. I can't share roadmaps here, but there will be an answer at some point in time. I'll just leave it at that, Michael and Edris. Edris, you've been on before. Thank you. Welcome back. Okay, so back to the diagram. Immutability at every step. What my thought here is by having these immutability options end-to-end, -end, you can have one copy on this performance tier, Love the a performance second tier. copy, on the capacity tier. So mm -hmm. this nice. is that double play. So both copies are what? Immutable. Immutable, and that's a good thing. And one of the things that I, I think a lot of people don't get when I draw this, or draw PowerPoint draw this with Veeam, is that what is missing from this, by the way, Melissa? What, what else is part of the story? I don't Everything know. What else. is missing? Like your 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 Veeam infrastructure, your oh, yeah. your source data. I'm actually preparing for everything to have failed. That, well, that's what I was going to say. It doesn't matter because, you know, the yeah. whole pets versus cattle thing that we've always gone over, like your Veeam environment, that's like cattle. Like all you need to do is connect to one of these repositories and with a brand new server and you're back in business, right? The way we store the data, I mean, you're fine. Cattle. Interesting. Cattle. I, pets versus you know, cattle. You've never heard that? No, I, I, I grew up with cows. But it's another <laughs> show. First cattle, right? So yeah. it kind of it's like a VMware thing. Like, oh, are your VMs like the pets you really care about and you nurture? Are they cattle? You don't care. I My VMware hosts cattle. Stuff. Don't care. No. Uh, well, maybe this know, is a bad example. No, uh, I mean, well, but it's funny because then you know, as we're enjoying the steak, anyways. Okay. <laughs> so the thought is, as you work downstream, this is the part that matters. The copy yeah, this of is the, the stuff that matters. The copy yes. of your data. As long as you have one of these copies, right, you're going to be yeah. good to go. And and that's just it right here. Let me see if I can do this right. Each copy is fully self-describing and recoverable. So and independent, right? And independent. I don't need any any type of proxy server in the cloud. I don't need any dependency on anything else that's ever happened. All I need is this copy of data. So a bucket, and you're good to go. Now, one thing I'll caveat: if you encrypt it with Veeam, you will need that encryption password, and that's a user-defined set thing. That's right. the only thing that you would need. So that's that's kind of the mindset of double play. And if you still don't like me, well, then put a copy on tape. Put a copy with a sure. server. Easier than ever. So what does this look like? And, you know, the cloud is a great way to get There's started. a lot of different ways to do yeah. it, too. Like, that's the beautiful yeah. part. We'll go over a couple here. But you can do this a lot of different ways, which means no matter what your budget is or what kind of infrastructure you're working with, right, mm -hmm. you can develop a solution that's going to have immu multiple immutable copies of your data. And Very some simple. people aren't ready for the cloud. 
I, I, there's there's this one nothing young, wrong with that. There's this the one way. young lady on my team who, wait, <sighs> wait, no, different, different conversation. But anyways, some people aren't ready for the cloud. So it's actually very easy to get this double play copy of immutable data on premises as well. So take the hardened repository and then a backup copy job to a second system with the hardened repository. And here's the trick. When these backups are, are written on Linux with immutable attributes, the trick is just you know use a different distribution of Linux and always use different uh, passwords and things like that. In fact, I'm working on, just did the first segment today, the hardened repository workshop video. So even if you don't have the cloud as an option with no additional Veeam cost, you can have multiple copies as well. So Any you hardware support. you want. Whatever you got. Indeed. Whatever's so, on sale this week, right? We don't um, care. Yeah, I, I, I want to care, but Veeam doesn't. No, you don't. Yeah. So don't. <laughs> I'll say that the, the highest performing environments we see, especially not just for backup, but also recovery, the highest performing environments are those industry standard servers with a lot of density. They, I mean, I, I'm far removed from the the speeds and feeds world, but I'm blown away with some of the stuff that I see from, from some of the... Uh, the partners and the smart users out there. And, you know, these hardened Linux repositories just makes it so easy. I mean, what what do you what do you see when you talk to customers as well, Melissa and partners? Yeah, I see the same thing, right? Because I can buy the biggest, baddest, fastest, cheapest server, right? And turn it into a hardened repository, immutable copy of my data right there. Love it. And the other thing is, again, with the scale out backup repository, if you change any of the underlying components. You don't care especially with the seal and the move and the maintenance mode and the evacuation uh, properties, you can change brands, hardware is very, very easy. Okay, so not everybody's ready for the cloud, but we also have the service provider angle, right? That's a very easy way to get started, especially if you're single site. Um, cloud Connect, you know, if you had to introduce Cloud Connect to someone, Melissa, how would you? I actually, um, funny story, I actually use Cloud Connect as part of my VCDX design back in the day for exactly this use case, right? We did not have the capacity to recover on site. Um, so we needed to get our backups off site to recover with a service provider. So it's a really quick and easy way to not only get your data to a service provider, but also be able to use their resources too as well, right? Okay, something happens, I want to restore their infrastructure because I just don't have it. Well, that's a very good point. And one thing I'll add about the Cloud Connect angle, uh, this is just me showing off here, all right? But because I've been at Veeam so long, I can throw down these little anecdotes. But this particular technology, Insider Protection, which is part of Cloud Connect, which Cloud Connect is offered by service providers all over the world, Insider Protection is a second copy of your data that, that you don't have access to. Well, neither do the service providers for that matter, because we recommend you encrypt it as it goes in there. But to recover this ransomware, fire, flood, and blood, accidental deletion, malicious administrator, you name it. To recover this, this is actually, this would be what I call a four eyes recovery. You need two humans to do it because the service provider has to engage to expose this copy of data. So it meets my ultra resilient criteria. And this is a very easy way to get started. You need one TCP port over the internet and you can send backups to a service provider. And what's really interesting is that if you think about some of the, again, fire, flood and blood ransomware type situations, you might not trust where you came from and service providers right. can really help you spin up some IaaS. And or you might not be able to use where you came from yeah, right? because yeah. the law enforcement was involved and said, hey, you're not touching your infrastructure until we finish our investigation. Good luck recovering. Indeed. I just see a question come in from Anand about immutability in Azure. So I'm going to take that one right now and give you a thumbs up. But basically uh, on that one, Anand, there will be a time when, when this happens, but um, you know, it's not something I can share right now. I will tell you it's in, I believe it's still in preview with, with Microsoft. I, I haven't looked, I've been off for a couple of weeks, but um, as of recently, it was still in preview. So Veeam would need that to be GA and then we'd align it to the right vehicle. There will be a time. I just don't have it to share with you at this time. All right, so now we're gonna do something fun. Melissa, put yes. me on the hot seat. Ah, what are we gonna all right. do? Which of these should Rick demo? the harder repository or object lock with the capacity tier. Now we mentioned these both and we showed them in our diagram. 
I'm going to forecast that everybody is going to pick the hardened repository because it is a really super easy, um, quick way to get started with immutability and doesn't have many requirements other than a Linux server. All That's right, so like drop, drop in number one or two, which one you want, and I'm going to be put on the hot seat. I don't know how this show is going to end here. But give know. me a, yeah, so Melissa's predicting that the hardened repository will be what people want to see. Team hardened repository right here. All right, team hardened repository. So drop in the chat of your social network, of your stream, which one you want to see. And when we say the hardened repository, that's a Linux system, any Linux system with Veeam backups written on that file system with immutable attributes. And there's this really cool one-time credential. So let's see what comes in. And I, I have a suspicion people are going to want capacity tier. I knew you were going to go the other way. I I'm know I'm going to be contrary here because uh, the cloud, Amazon, those types, people people really like that. So, all right, some results are coming in. There is a little bit of a lag here, so we will um, see what we get here. And I've so got if across. I had, okay, so yeah. if I had a hardened repository. Yeah. And then something in the middle. Forget what's in the middle. <laughs> and then, well, I guess it would have to be certain things. And then I had the capacity tier and then I had the archive tier. That would be my triple play immutability, right? I have it three different places. You could, that's that's a triple, right? To the archive tier or uh, two on-prem hardens and one offsite capacity. Would that um, still be triple play if I had two on-prem different hardens and a- Yes. Okay. As long as they're, I'm seeing all ones across the board. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I called it. You called it. You called it. All right. All right. So let's do a switch here. I think I'm just going to, I'm just going to call it. So let me switch over to, uh, pardon me. This is a live, live is live. Okay. Live is live. Yes. Live is live. So what we're looking at here is the scale out backup repository list that I've got here. And again, I do recommend you use this for everything. So I mentioned double play. So what do I have in, well, you don't have the the view gets a little cheeky there for you, Melissa. Melissa, but <laughs> I have two, two, one extent and one capacity tier, right? So I'm basically yeah. doing double play right from the start. Sounds so, good, looks good. I have a little penguin there saying that's my Linux repository. That's right. I got a little bucket for my Amazon S3 bucket. That's kind of genius. Indeed, indeed. So if I go take a look here, if I wanted to add a new one. Uh, add a new Linux repo. I'm going to put something up now. I already have it set up, so I'm going to fake it for just a second here. Let me put something in an IP, but this is the part that matters, right? And because Melissa loves all this stuff, I'm going to make it pink. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Single use credentials for the hardened repository. Once we define the hardened repository, this is the most important thing. So this one timer in hockey terms, so we go from baseball to hockey here. This one timer is used to put the uh, put the Veeam services on the service or on the Linux server, and then Veeam doesn't have a persistent connection back. Very, very, very important because again, I'm preparing for the console to have fire, flood, and blood, malicious administrator, accidental deletion, ransomware. There's no persistent connection from the console back. This is very, very important. So make sure you use that single use credential. Now I already have this set up here for this particular server here. Let's go back to green. TPM 0M Ubuntu, all right. I like uh, this, Ubuntu, that's like a good distro. I'm, Easy to I'm, use, yeah. right? If I don't know anything about Linux, but I wanna use a hardened Linux repo, I'm probably gonna get started with Ubuntu. Indeed. So I have this one set already and I am using the single use credential. So it's a very easy add. But where it starts getting magical is on uh, uh, this one here, the actual individual repository. And one thing I can tell you here as a recommendation is to make your repository names self-describing. So this right here, the one that I've highlighted in green, tells me it's immutable, it's the hardened repository, and it's a performance tier. And then over on the right, I see where it is and it's sizing. So really, really easy. From a immutability standpoint, I'll walk through the menu and say, where is it, which is on the server itself, which we added a moment ago. Where is the individual path of the backups? That is what Veeam calls a repository. And from a repository standpoint, the magic here is this is where we can do actually a number of very amazing things. One, we select the path. This is where it goes. This is the file system, the actual 
path on disk. This is where the immutable backups will live. Then um, let's go to awesome number thing two and put it in red and use this XFS fast cloning. Now, Melissa, you have a storage background. How would you explain this technology? Um, I would basically just uh, explain it similar to some of the stuff that was done in VMware back in the day that, okay, I need to clone something, right? And I'm going to offload that to make it super, super fast. Same type of thing. We, I call it no dupe. No dupe. It's I a, like that. It's a storage efficiency that prevents duplication, but it is not deduplication. Yes, so, exactly. Oh, it's, no it, that's a good way to put it. It's an efficiency yeah. that you never even have to deduplicate it because it never gets duplicated in the first place because you're just offloading the whole thing. Indeed, especially <laughs> synthetic fools, uh, things like that. All right. And then this is the blue here. This is where we set our user to find the mutability term. And by the way, make sure you're using Veeam 1 because if this gets changed, you'll get alerted on that and then put some special handling on that to either slap people on the wrist, change it back, or notify admins. Right here, very, very simple. This is the part that matters to set up immutability. So let me show you kind of what you can do with that information. So let me see if I can remember all those paths. So I actually thought, Melissa, I thought people were going to choose cloud because I have all that already, but I didn't prep the hardened Linux repo. Oh, come on. I, so, and this is the first time I've been in the lab all year. So bear with me if I mess up something. I haven't messed up yet. Okay, good. All right. So, um, and I know this is really hard to see, so I'm going to do my best to be zooming in here. Um, but actually, Marco asked a really good question. I'm just going to pause for a second. Is there a guide to implement the Linux VM for immutability? Two comments there, Marco. One, I don't recommend doing it as a virtual machine. But then number two, uh, yes, I am working on that as we speak, by the way. And there, yeah, you're doing some uh, nice videos on how to do it basically, right? Yeah. But if you go to the backup and replication documentation, it's all laid out for you there step by step. It's about like three steps that you have to do to set it up. Yeah, and it's it, I'm going to make a full end-to-end -end workshop that will uh, uh, walk you through it. Uh, so stand stay tuned for that. It's going to be on the Veeam Community Hub. Uh, Marco, if you're not a member there, go in and become a member. All right, of course, I could have prepared and had this already, but let me show you all something really quick here. So what I'm looking at right here is a file system path. Um, this is a collection of Hyper-V backup jobs, and I've listed, sorry, I've listed the path here so you'll see that there's a metadata file this one doesn't get marked as immutable don't let that scare you this is the most least important this is the least important file in the path what we care about are the vbks which are the full backups and then we care about the vibs which are the incremental backups that sit on disk here all right these are the files and i'll show you that real quick here and another session here do you know i just put together that ib stands for incremental backup like right now <laughs> hey now like i knew uh, it in my mind but i didn't realize that was yeah like yeah fair shout so and then here's the attribute listing right so the ones that are in that term they carry this immutable tag here and you'll see that the the full backup has it as well so any part of that chain that's needed will will persist with these immutability at, attributes. So uh, that's a quick and dirty. And I will highlight I am working on a cool end to end workshop video that will show how you configure the hardened repository. In fact, I have over there behind me, I have a server that I just got the drives in. I'm going to take it over to the data center. I have a camera. Uh, our producer is going to hate me when he stitches together all 43 of these video segments, but um, I'm going to walk through end to end everything from making a Ubuntu install USB to the configuration to all the different things you do in Linux. Because what we found, Melissa, is that not everybody's super comfortable with some of the Linux involved right like hey just go do this you know set up if you've never done it before yeah. right it could be a little intimidating don't indeed. worry we got your back indeed so um chad i'm gonna get you with the the uh 
cloud one next time. So he was my lone vote for number two. So. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So um, I think I got a message that the second hit of the map is ready. I All think right. And let's take wow, a, that's a lot more green. Here. Oh, wow. There we go. So I lost my screen. Went to the wrong one. But anyways, we have Ohio. We have Colorado. Oh, Ohio again. We have Colorado. We have Indiana. My sister lives there. We have Italy and France again over in Europe. And then we have in Africa. We have South Africa. And we have actually, I don't know. These might be a first. We have some new ones in um, in Europe with, or not Europe, but in Asia with Bangladesh and Vietnam. I don't know if Bangladesh, at least on our show, Melissa, I don't know if that's happened yet. So I, either way, welcome. I mean, this is great just to see all these different uh, locales. I really appreciate it. All right. So as we wrap up, there are two things I wanted to say. We're getting ready for a whole new blast of uh, sessions, especially on Jason and Dave's Industry Insight show. That's the Monday show. They're back Monday, the uh, I guess that would be the 10th, and they are going to be with episode 77. I think they're continuing their sentiment research, which is the what they're finding in the different segments of uh, this this research, the amazing research that they do. I, it blows me away. I do like reading that data. And then tell us about what's coming up next Friday. We had a Melissa idea. Oh, so we're going with a Melissa idea, right? So we're going to walk through a little bit of, um, I'm potentially calling it a backup health check, right? Where we're going to go through kind of your whole environment and say, okay, what are the things I need to be doing right now to make sure my environment's in good health and I'm protecting all my assets in case something like ransomware happens later, right? We just want to make sure that all that front upfront work is done and everybody's in a good spot to actually recover on disaster day. Disaster day. I love yes, that's that. a new one I'm using. Yeah, that's up there with the disastrous. All right. Hey, on behalf of the whole team, thank you for joining me again here today, Melissa. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Anytime, Rick. Uh, big shout out to Katie, our producer in Romania. Big shout out to Mark, our producer in Atlanta, and all of you who have joined. Thank and you so whoever much. just joined us from Bulgaria, because that is a first for this show. Thank oh, you for the, joining. Yeah, yeah. Cheers. Welcome. Welcome. And uh, so on behalf of the whole Veeam team and everyone else who's helped produce this, we really appreciate your time. Have a great weekend, everyone, and we'll see you next Friday.